And that was, you know, the guy in my dream that the Lord showed me years before. I know I said I ain't got game, but that one moment, God was gracious to me. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kimberly Louise and I make faith, homemaking, and lifestyle content here on YouTube. Today's video is going to be all about how God wrote our love story. And of course, I have my special guest here. Hello everyone, I am Jotham, husband of this wonderful lady right here. So if you wanna see how God wrote our love story, then just keep on watching. Okay, so you guys know for the month of February, every Wednesday is our love series. So last week we talked about how to love God well when you're single. This week, we're just gonna be sharing our love story. I pray that it encourages you guys because I know the wait is not easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into my side of it. This was probably back in 2014, 2015. God speaks to me a lot in dreams. So I dreamed that I was, that I met someone named Joe. And it was weird because I was like, I don't really know anyone named Joe at the time. But at the time, you guys should know this, I volunteered a lot. I was volunteering at events. I was volunteering at church. I was volunteering at the homeless shelter. I was, <laughs> I was volunteering everywhere. And so um, when I was doing that, I would meet all kinds of people. And so there was a particular guy that they put me at his table to sell his merch one time and his name was Joe. So I was like, oh, well, I guess this must be the guy that God was saying that I was supposed to be with. <laughs> this guy <laughs> that I'm supposed to be with or whatever. And so in my mind, I'm like, okay, he showed me this in a dream. Okay, God, you know, this man need to make a move. He don't make no moves. So after that, I'm like, okay, Lord, you got to, you got to do something. You got to show me something. Like I'm not really dating right now. I'm not really interested in dating. And I think maybe like, I want to say a few months later he showed me this dream it was in this dream where i was in this empty house and a man was there helping me move and so i'm like first of all i'm not moving out of my house second of all who is this man third of all like it was a lot going on and me and god be having conversations okay fast forward to 2017 at the top of that year my dad was like i think you need to sell your house and move back in with us and i'm like thing like again that was 2014 2015 when I'm having this dream that I'm moving out of the house that I was in so I'm like dad like what's the issue like what what are you saying because I just feel like you should you know move back in with us or whatever and I'm like dad whatever like you know we do what we want to do we grown okay so didn't think nothing of this this is the beginning of 2017 October or November of that year I was like okay um I went out of town to see some of my friends and it was during that time out of town that I just felt like I felt like there was a shift happening um, like something was about to be different something was about to change or whatever I didn't know what it was but I knew it was something and so as as I'm headed back from out of town I was talking to my brother he's not my actual brother but y'all know I've talked about him plenty of times I was talking to him and his wife and I was just like, man, bro, I don't know what's, I don't know what's about to happen, but I feel like, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a man, I don't know what's going on. So after that conversation, I came back um, in December, I talked to my realtor because she, she had ended up calling me and was like, hey Kim, the market is good. Like, I think it's a good time to sell if you were thinking about it. It's just something she always does with her buyers or whatever. And I was like, it's so crazy you say that because my dad was like, I think you should sell your house. And I'm like, why does everybody keep, you know, like, why does this keep happening? So I'm like, I go into prayer and I'm like, okay, Lord, like, am I supposed to sell my house? Like, what is this about <laughs> type thing? So um, she was like, well, just pray about it. Here's, you know, what you could get on the house and all of this stuff. And it was just a really good, it was a really great market. Not like today's market. Back then was amazing. And so I was like, Okay, okay, so finally I decided by the end of that year, 2017, December, I was like, I'm gonna sell my house, but I had to, there's a lot of stuff I had to get rid of. I had to get rid of, y'all know, we have all kinds of stuff. I had to get rid of so much. And so, I know my part of this story is long, but y'all, I'm, I'm going somewhere, I promise I'm going somewhere. <laughs> okay, so um, after, after that, by March of 2018, 
I was like, okay, I'm ready to put on the market. I got rid of whatever I wanted to get rid of. I was good to go. So by March of 2018, I had gone back out of town to see my friends. And that weekend, my realtor texted me and she was like, hey, she was like, I think we got a good offer. Um, I think we're gonna, we should go with this one. Let me send it to you. So she sends it to me. I'm like, okay, it looks good. Everything looks good. Let's see if it goes through. So the people ended up wanting to buy the house. My house was sold basically in two days. Like it was on the market Friday. It was sold by maybe Sunday. <laughs> so that was a God thing too, because it just happened very, very quickly. And so, but with that, I then had 30 days to move out. <laughs> okay. So, um, at that point, I was still trying to decide did I want to move back in with my parents? Did I want to get in a, did I want to get like a, you know, a nice apartment? Like, what did I want to do? I didn't know. And so, um, I ended up deciding to move in with my parents. If you ever sold a house, then you know, like, they might find something wrong. You got to get something fixed. I ended up having to get a whole new garage. I had to get the dishwasher fixed. There was something wrong with the window. It was all kind of stuff, y'all. So I was stressed, okay, <laughs> to say the least. I get a call from my brother probably like the first week of April. And I should say this, and this is crazy. So my pastor at the time, probably that first week of April was like, are you getting ready to leave me? And at this time I was like, what are you talking about? Like, I just got here. I'm not going anywhere. Like, I was so confused. He was like, I don't know, something is different. And I was like, okay, I need you to, you know, calm down a bit. It's not that serious. I don't know what you got going on. So then I talked to my brother and he was like, hey, I just really feel like um, you need to meet this guy. And I'm like, why? You felt like I needed to meet another guy and he ain't never called or whatever. So you guys should know by this point, I was over dating. I don't know if you can tell that. I was over it. I didn't, I just, I was sick of the, I just was tired. I was tired of people setting me up. I was just over it. So when he said it, I was like, man, whatever, man. So he's like, let me just send you a picture. I'm gonna send you a picture, you know, and you can just pray about it and tell me what you think. And I'm like, okay, whatever, send a picture. So he sends this picture and this guy looks like he's 19. Mind you, I was 31 or something at the time. So I'm going, how old is he? Like, what are you doing to me right now? Like, I need, you know, a grown up. you know what I'm saying? Now, <laughs> so I will interject. <laughs> And say I had a bad habit of not updating my profile pictures on social media so even though at the time I was probably what my late 20s the picture itself was probably from my early 20s <laughs> you know so it yeah well anyway so so that's the picture I saw and at the time I was like again I was over dating I had a lot going on I'm moving I just I wasn't about it <laughs> so I remember telling my brother I was like man I'm probably not gonna go Y'all have a y'all have a great game night, you know, whatever. He was like, man, I'm telling you, like, I'm for real. Like, I feel like, I feel like he would not let up. One day I'm gonna have him on this channel so y'all can see how animated he is, but he would not let up. So after this, I, I leave. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going. I talked to my cousin at the time. She was like, yeah, I don't know either. So I leave. I'm like, all right, whatever. I call my mentor and I'm like, bro, want me to meet this guy? What you think? <laughs> Okay. She's like, well, if he feels this strongly about it, maybe you should pray about it and consider it. And I'm like, I just, I'm, I'm sick of people trying to hook me up. Like, I'm very like stubborn when it comes to stuff like that. I'm sick of it. I like, no. She was like, I'm just telling you to pray about it. So I go home that week, cause it's probably the beginning of April. The, the game night was the end of that week. That same week I had people coming to the house. It was a lot going on. So I was like, okay. Ended up meeting up with my mentor again. And then she was like, are you gonna go? And I was like, I think I'm gonna go. But y'all, let me tell you something. In the back of my head, y'all, I was sitting there like, oh my God, what am I gonna wear? Like, And I usually don't care about stuff like that. It's just they house. You know what I mean? When you just go into your friend's house, you're not like super concerned about what you're wearing and stuff for whatever reason. I was like, oh my God, like, what am I gonna wear? Like, what I need to like. <laughs> It was just crazy. I was like, this has to be something different, but I didn't say anything to anybody. So I go to the game, I go to the game night and I get there early. And then I let you kind of interject here. And you can tell like your part like before and up until then. Alright. So 
I guess in terms of my singleness leading up to our encounter, it's at game night. Uh, so I moved up north after I finished college and started working. And I would probably say, you know, during that time, I dated some, um, but nothing that, you know, panned out. Uh, you know, similar to Kim, I had friends who, you know, may try to hook me up with their friends, but, you know, sometimes it was probably more than their friends' interest in mine. No, 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 you know, no shade to the friends, it's just kind of how it was. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and, you know, got really involved church uh, when I met uh, my pastor up there or my previous pastor up there and I would say it was around 2016 I would say um, I and this is just background to help like connect the dots <laughs> so uh, around 2016 I uh, the church I was a part of well actually that was probably like 20 Church I was um, like really involved with ended up uh, shutting down, and so um, you know found another church, uh, you know kept it rolling. And around 2016, I got sick, uh, but you know after doing what I need to do, you know I was able to get medication, kept it moving. And then my uh, pastor at the church that shut down, uh, they had moved uh, moved down south. We're like, uh, hey Joe. Um, you know, we're looking to do this again, and you know, I want you to like pray about you know potentially being a part of it. So I was like, okay, cool. And around that same time, the job I was at, they uh, announced like, hey, we're gonna be doing some layoffs, and you know, kind of doing the whole like severance package, package opt-in option. So I was like, all right, Lord, um, I think this might be you. So I'm gonna put my name in that hat, and if I get picked, we we going back to the south. Um, mind you, I had been praying for a couple of years about that because I'm originally from South, so I was kind of longing to get back because you know me and the snow, you know, it is not what they what they portray in the movies. But um, so I ended up uh, you know getting that and moved down down here in November of 2017, and. Uh, one of the first things on the docket when I came down, he was like, all right, I need to establish care with a doctor so I can keep, you know, getting my medicine because I, you know, got sick, all that type of stuff. And, you know, pastor, he suggested a, uh, a hospital. And so I was like, okay, cool. Went there at the time. He also, like, gave me a book that he wanted me to read. So I just took that along with me. And while I'm getting registered, the guy that was, like, you know, taking in my information, getting my accounts and all that set up, uh, you know, just for that initial check-in. Uh, he kind of sees my book and he was like, what's that you're reading? And I can't remember the name of the book right now, but it was something about Jesus. So, <laughs> of course it's about Jesus, babe. But, um, I read comic books some, but you know, I give some. Um, but yeah, and so we kind of, you know, struck up a small little conversation and I kind of told him, uh, it's just how, I, you know, I had just moved down here, everything that was going on. And he was like, wait a minute, who's the name of this pastor? And I tell him, he was like, bro, I know him. I was like, what? And so come to find out that like, oh, uh, you know, my pastor had also been talking to him about, about this church. And so next thing we know, okay, we find ourselves like in, in similar meetings and all this type of stuff. So we uh, hit it off and uh, connect. Fast forward the clock a little bit, we get really cool. And I guess for the sake of uh, reference, who, who Kim calls her brother, I'm gonna call the professor. And so, and so the professor. What's up, bro? <laughs> and so uh, the professor, you know, after we, you know, been hanging, hanging out, talking about the church, figuring stuff out, uh, he tells me, hey, I got a friend. And so he showed me a picture, I was like, oh, she cute. And then, um, you know, do, do a very minimal amount of Facebook stalking, very minimal. You know, just see what she about, you know, just make sure she was more than just, you know, she she was uh, down with the Lord and more than just a hashtag. So okay. I was like, oh, yeah, she seems really nice, and, you know. And then he also tells me about this uh, game night. And it was so it was a game night, but it was also like an opportunity to like let, you know, some friends and family know about, you know, this church. See, so, yeah, I arrived at the game night 
and you know go around hugging greeting everybody and i see kim and i'm like oh uh i don't know if it was nerves or what i just shake her hand after i hugged everybody else and i don't know if i just didn't want to come on too strong or something with a hug i don't know but that's what happened and so you know awkward moment number one and uh throughout the rest of the night you know we have food and y'all like i don't have a game like i'm not i'm not the ladies man i don't always know what to say like i i Yes, you should. No, I don't. You be no. Baby, that was a real sweet lie. But <laughs> I don't. I don't. <laughs> so, you know, so it's like, I'll, you know, I'd be going to get food the same time Kim was, and I'd be like, oh, you know, can I grab this for you? Can I pour you a drink? Whatever, because I mean, I, you know, I guess like service is my love language in a sense. Like how I give love, you know, it's just like, hey, now what can I do for you? Because clearly I ain't got game, so I don't have the words. <laughs> so, uh, um, and every time I like tried to offer some type of help or a little act of service, can be like, oh, I'm fine, thank you. Just, just as nice and sweet. Y'all have to understand, like I, I trusted nobody. If I'm honest, if I'm honest, but I'm also the kind of person that if if you're around and you see me doing things and you see something else that needs to be done, then just do it. Don't ask me. Just no, I'm fine. Like, and I am the type of person that don't want to assume nothing, <laughs> lest it seem like I'm trying to tread upon your independence. <laughs> so therefore, I was being cautious. So and at the same time, nerves. Nerves. So okay. So at this game night, we we were playing. We played taboo, and if you know me, I love me some taboo. But the team I had was not it, y'all. So they had me explaining the taboo game. And so this guy stands up and he was like, wait, can you explain that again? And it was at this point that I was like, oh, okay, so you trying to, you trying to be cute or whatever, okay. Okay, mind you, in the back of my head, I was like, but I didn't say anything. I didn't say anything. He never knew nothing, okay? I just was like, oh, he played games? Oh my God, like, my family is gonna be obsessed. Like, I just, I was just already there a little bit. But again, ladies, don't say nothing. Even if you know, don't, just let him think you don't like him. <laughs> like, until it's time for him to really know. So that's kind of what I was doing. So I was explaining the game or whatever. We played the game. We end up losing. And um, and after said loss, I was accused of cheating, apparently. And uh, they put me on a team with people who don't know how to play taboo. How you don't know how to play taboo? But whatever. That was in 2018. I'm not bitter. Clearly. Not. Okay, carry on. So anyway, after victory, uh, what you? You said it. I'm disagreeing. What are you talking about? So after after, after the, the the taboo victory. Um, there was a brief huddle of the guys because I think at that point all of us who were there had met uh, my pastor about the about the church. So he was like, "All right, you know, after the game, we're gonna, you know, give everybody a little sec to chill out, and then we're gonna, you know, talk about church." Now, at the time, I thought, you know, it was it seemed like a joke, but clearly it wasn't. <laughs> so kind of just randomly, uh, you know, pastor just throws out the comment. He's like, y'all, let's let's just pray that Jotham and Kim hit it off. He's like, matter of fact, every married man, lay a hand on him right now. Jotham, lift up your hands. So I was like, what is happening right now? Why is everyone touching me? Now, like, mind you, I don't know this is happening. I have no idea that this is happening. They had went into a whole other room. So I didn't even know what was going on, which is just crazy to me. Yeah, That's crazy that you y'all pray that the day we met. I like, you know. God wrote our love story, y'all. Y'all, you know, it was a playful moment, but powerful, apparently. So, <laughs> and so, um, you know, we, you know, had food, played games. Uh, the pastor ended up telling everybody um, about the church, about some of us. And then uh, pretty much after that, you know, the night was wrapping up because it was getting kind of late. And in my mind, I'm like, all right, I have failed to really 
make any sort of meaningful communication with this woman outside of her accusing me of cheating and taboo. So, here, I was like, all right, here's the game plan. Like I said, service is the love language. So therefore, I'm like, all right. I heard, I overheard her say that like she brought a lot of this stuff, like some tables and some games and all this. So I'm gonna offer to help take this stuff to her car. And then, in that moment, in that act of service, be like okay hey you know maybe we can talk sometime nice to meet you da, 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 whatever you know sounded better in my head than what was probably going to come out of my mouth but had a game plan and just as Kim was preparing to leave I I think my pastor called me for something and I was like what did you, I, I, but no wait and so uh, that moment was missed and I I'm the type of person when I'm ready to go I'm ready to go, and I drove myself, and I can leave whenever I want to leave. And I and I said, if he wants to get in touch with me, he will. I was unbothered by it. I wasn't concerned about it. I went home, went to sleep, got up, went to church the next day, like nothing happened. And I went home, <laughs> felt like I just bombed, and just she had zero interest in me whatsoever. Matter of fact, the professor called me. He was like, hey, bro, so like, you know, how was it? You know, how was it? I was like, I, I don't think she has any interest in me at all. She seems very nice, but. <laughs> I just think she has a care in the world about me. <laughs> He's like, you, you sure? I'm like, yeah, I think so. I mean, so Kim and then he called me. He was like, what did you think? And I said, he seems like a decent human being. This is exactly what I said. He was like, what does that mean? I'm like, I mean, he seems like you know a nice, a nice person. Again, I already knew this was the dude. If that makes any sense. Like I already knew, but I'm, I can't let everybody know that. You know, you gotta keep some stuff, you know, between you and the Lord. And so, just poker face. I, I did no great idea. poker face, great poker face. And so I told him, I said he's a decent human being. I'm like, I wouldn't mind talking to him. He seems like he's nice. Like I saw him, you know, kind of like playing with the kids and making sure they were okay. And I kind of saw a lot of his heart, like through some of the things that he was doing. And then eventually when he ended up getting up, helping take out the trash and stuff, I was like, okay, you know, he can take a hint. Like, I'm not gonna tell you what to do. Like, if you see something that needs to be done, then do it. I said, okay, that's a good, you know, character trait or whatever. So during this time, I'm very observant. I'm a very observant person. I'm gonna watch you, but it's not gonna seem like I'm watching you. Like, you're not gonna think again that I care. So. I didn't. <laughs> so, so yeah, so yeah. I think it's like, yeah, the next day, um, he texted me. Well, I get, yeah. So I get your number from the professor. Yeah. And ended up texting you. And I was like, hey, you know, it's nice to meet you. Uh, now I'm just trying to set up a time. Well, yeah, it was later in the day. Yeah. Cause, and I just didn't want to call too late. And so I was just sent a quick text. and was like, hey, nice to meet you. Would love to talk some time. You know, what day is good for you? And then. And I was like, you know, Tuesday would be great. Because I was very, very busy. At this time, I was working like three jobs, y'all. I had a lot going on. And again, I told y'all, I'm trying to sell my house. So it's like, times for stuff was very, <laughs> I had a minimal amount of time. So, so I was like, okay, Tuesday. So he calls me on Tuesday. We talked on the phone for like three, almost four hours, which was crazy to me. We talked about everything, mostly him. He talked a lot. Which is actually rare for me because typically when I meet someone for the first time, I'm usually more, I'm usually quiet and just listen. I, I too am very observant. And so a lot of times I just kind of let the people do the talking and I just kind of sit back and kind of just gauge and analyze and just take in the data. But I don't know, that's why I tell you like when, <laughs> when sometimes you be like we're meeting people, you're like, man, you know, Jonathan's really quiet. And I'm just like, that's, I normally am <laughs> until I, you know, quiet. until I warm up to you, then I, you know. And I'm talking a lot, but yeah, just for you, I just could shut up. You could not shut up. But mind you, again, I'm very busy. I was doing laundry. I was getting stuff done. I had had dinner on the phone with him. I had was preparing a Bible study. I was doing I was, a whole bunch of stuff. I was what doing, were you doing? I was doing none of that. I was just pacing back and forth in the room, just talking to her, not eating, not nothing, thinking she was doing the same. So like I like by the time we got off the phone, I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sure you got stuff to do. And I didn't held you up, and she was like, oh no, I did everything. I was like, oh. I had my pajamas on in the bed. I was like, oh, yep. well, well, I've done nothing. <laughs> Have a good so, night. Okay, so then the next day gets here. So I'm thinking, oh, we had this 
amazing conversation. Like, he gonna blow me up. He gonna be like, good morning, beautiful, you know, all the girl, nothing. Didn't hear words from him. Didn't get a nothing. So the whole day, I'm mad. All day, I'm like, okay, Lord, you done sent this man. You done told me this man named Joe. You done did all this. He ain't gonna say nothing to me today? Okay. So I done worked all my little jobs. I get home, twisting up my hair in the bathroom mirror. I'm, I'm standing in the mirror and I'm like, Lord, if this man does not say anything to me today, I am done dating. I am not dating anymore. I am gonna just be a nun or something. I don't know. Like, I'm done with it. Like, I was... <laughs> I was over it at that point. Like, y'all don't even understand. As I'm talking to God, I get a text from this guy. Like, hey, how was your day? And I'm like, all right, Lord, I got me. Okay, if you want me to be with him, then just say that. You know what I'm saying? Then just say that. Then, you know, like, that's kind of how it happened. And so after that, we pretty much were inseparable until I think, like, we end up going on a date, an actual physical, uh, in-person date, like the week after. Yeah. Mind you, I'm st still about to sell my house. So after that, it was like, maybe like 10 days after that or something, he was like, hey, I wanted to see if I could take you out. And I'm like, oh, I gotta be out of my house like tomorrow. Like, I don't really know if I'm gonna have time and all of this. And so I was talking to my cousin, she was at my house helping me pack and she was like, but you gotta eat. But I'm saying, who finna pack up all this stuff? Who finna help me move this stuff? <laughs> she was like, I'm just saying, like, you should probably just at least go eat and then just go home. It ain't a big deal. End up going out to eat with him. We stayed up. We stayed out kind of late that night because we were just talking. I'm getting messages from my phone like, are you okay? When are you going home? Where are y'all at? Like, people concerned and worried and all this loved. stuff. And so, yes, I'm very loved, okay? They do not play about me at all. <laughs> so, um, ended up staying out and we were just talking about everything. And I just, I don't know, I just started to like see God through this man. And I was like, okay, okay, <laughs> all right, all right, God, all right, all right. You know, you, you, you know, you know, you be doing your thing. So the next day, he had actually asked me if he could help me move. And I was like, oh no, I was like, I don't need help. I, I'm good, I'm gonna have um, people come get the furniture. So it's really not even gonna be that big of a stuff. I'm not even gonna have furniture really to move. It'll just be boxes or whatever. I think I can do that. Cause I'm miss, I'm miss independent, okay? I I can handle my own life. Y'all, he had to deal with a lot <laughs> with me. <laughs> so anyway, I told him, I said, you could just come help. You could just come help them move the furniture if you just want to do something you know I don't want to you know stop you from doing something so he comes he helps them move the furniture and at the time my dad was sick my dad has always helped me move every move I've had my dad has helped me move in this particular one he did he wasn't able to the day I moved my mom was there my mom was there my dad was there my pastor came I think that was it that actually came over there and so my mom saw him and when he walked out she said yep and I'm like what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yep. Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> like, ma'am. She was like, oh, no, like, no, Kim, like, for real. Like, and I'm just sitting here going, my mom is such a good judge of character. And so she has, she has told me before in the past, like, nope, he ain't it. Nope. Mm -mm. Like, without even saying anything. And so when she said that, I'm going, okay, lady, you just, child, whatever. We got to get this stuff moved, whatever. So he comes back in after helping the people, and he's like, He's like, all right, is there anything else you need me to do? I said, nope, you're good, thank you, uh, see you later. This guy. I look around, mind you, she's like, oh, no, good, I've got it. Still got pretty much a house full of boxes. Furniture's gone, sure, but everything else is still there. <laughs> she's like, oh, no, it's just, it's just a little something. I'm like, I can help, you know. Mind you, service, love language. And so I'm just like, I said, I'm here to help, I ain't. But well, see, I didn't, I ain't know you like that, bro. Like, no, nah, like, I got it. You know, I, you know, I don't need nobody thinking, oh, I owe them, nah. Like, I can move my own stuff, it's mine. It might take me two days, even though I didn't have two days, I literally had that day, that day to, mm -hmm. to get the stuff out. Um, 
I don't know, it's just the fact that he volunteered to help that was kind of like, and he wouldn't let up. Like he wouldn't just let me be like, no, go ahead. Like he didn't leave. It was that moment where I was like, you know, kind of like. Let's be a lesson. Pick up a box every once in a while. <laughs> I was like, okay, like this dude, like, all right, like, all right, all right, you know. Um, so he helped me move. And that was, you know, the guy in my dream that the Lord showed me years before. It's just so crazy how stuff pans out. Like you might not feel like anything is changing. Your life might look the same, but the Lord is always working behind the scenes. And it's such a gift when he actually kind of shows you stuff in advance in a way and he's like hey this is gonna happen just keep trusting me keep believing in me i got it got everything back to the house and then we went we went to eat mm -hmm. yeah you took me to eat yeah. and it was at that dinner this is the end of april at this point at that dinner you were like this goes back to the whole don't really have the words game like i don't have it i was just like you know i've really been enjoying our time together you know look forward to having more of these and, you know, she's like yes me too we were and it was at the you know while we were eating we were both kind of like laughing about and just kind of talking about you know how our friends were looking us up and, and it was at that point i had mentioned like yeah I, I did meet someone while i moved down here you know kim was like okay well, what happened with, with that i was like well you happened y'all i know i said i ain't got game but that one moment god was gracious to me <laughs> Cause I look back at that and I was like, man, that might have been the best thing I ever said in my life. <laughs> but. But what you said, you said, I have You happened. And so I ain't had no words and that's very rare. Me. And I just looked at him like, oh, okay. I was like, well, what did you say to the girl? You know, when it was like over with, did you tell her like and I, something? And he was like, oh, I ain't say nothing to her. Yeah. You know, she checked me, and I appreciate her for being, you know, for being like, you, you should do better. And, you know, and I, and I did apologize. You know, after dinner, go home, you know, I take her home, go home. And all the guys in the church were like, you know, because I had been gone pretty much the whole day. So everybody's like texting, it's like, oh, how did it go to the, uh, you know, everybody asking questions. And like, as I'm answering these questions, I'm like, wait a minute. I don't really think I, I don't think she like picked up what I was putting down. And so I was like, hey, so I ended up texting her. I was like, hey, uh, sorry, I know I probably didn't really convey this well, but uh, I really wanted to know if, you know, if you would mind doing me the honor of birth. That was probably wasn't that, wasn't that eloquent. I was just like, hey, would you like to be my girlfriend? He was saying, I was asking you at the to be my girlfriend when I was being real super vague and stuff. And I'm one of those people that you need to say what you mean and mean what you say. So you until you say ask, yes. yep. Well, I meant yes. <laughs> you got to say it. So <laughs> you can't tell me what you're trying to say. Mm. Now I knew what he was trying to say, but I don't put words in people's mouth, especially not men. Uh-uh, you need to say what he mean. If he does not say it to you, it's probably, it's probably not gonna work. Like ladies, if he don't say, hey, I want to be with you, he probably doesn't. Or maybe he hasn't discovered it yet. Like, just let him, you know, let him say it. Mm. Or whatever. So he asked me to be his girlfriend, and I said it would be my honor because I saw him. I don't know. I just, I just saw God's heart through him. I did. I, I really did. Like I, I just saw how God was using him, not just to help me, but it was just like there was something deeper there, and I was like, huh. And then on top of that, after he had left, my dad was like, you have to know this about my dad. He does not, it's not that he doesn't like people. He, he like everybody. But as far as like saying that he likes a guy when it comes to his girls, nah, he not gonna do that. So he was like, I like him. He has some substance to him. And I said, what? <laughs> like, mind you, this is day one of them meeting him. This ain't even been a full 24 hours. I'm going. Oh yeah. Okay. I don't even know if I like him like that yet. Like I liked him, but I didn't know if you know. Yeah, because I mean, I guess I didn't really go through all the lists, but obviously, you know, helping her move, it didn't really dawn on me that oh, whilst helping her move, I would be meeting everyone else who was helping her move. So like that day, I met like her dad, her mom, her sister, 
and her cousin over the phone. Yep. And her pastor. Yep. And so, you know, I didn't expect to kind of run that gambit like that in one day, but. You did. I did. And then, I survived. So after that. And two weeks after that, um, I was taking a trip and I was driving overnight. And uh, I think even you going on the trip was crazy, but uh, Kim ended up accompanying me on that drive. It was like an eight to nine hour drive. Yeah. And, you know, when we get there, I'm um, we staying in a hotel. And so. That was another thing, y'all. So, in going on this trip, when you're trying to honor God with your life, uh, we were not having sex outside of marriage, neither one of us. And so when it came to like going on a trip, it was me that would usually have to say, okay, I'll just get my own room and whatever. He was like, no, I'm going to pay for each of our rooms. Like I didn't even have to like say, oh, I'll get my own room. He had already like taken care of that because he knew what it was. Because one of the first things I told you, I think, was is that I'm not kissing nobody until I get married. Oh, yeah. So, like, the yeah. dates. Yeah. So, after the night when I asked her to be my girlfriend, the next day we talked on the phone. And, you know, like, Kim was about the business. She was like, so, intentions, plans, what are we doing? What's up? Yep. And, uh, you know, she was like, so, just so you know, uh, you know, not having sex before marriage. I was like, cool. Me either, perfect. And and she was like, I also don't want to kiss until my wedding day. I was like, um, okay. Uh, didn't have that one in the plan. <laughs> but there was I'm, a few reasons for that for me. So for me, I knew that I know what kissing leads to. And I ain't about to say I'm that strong. I just wasn't about to say that. So I knew that. So I said, nope. We're just gonna take that off the table altogether. We just gonna just clear it. <laughs> Cause we ain't doing none of that. And I was kind of scared to tell him, but at the same time, I was like, listen, if he go after I tell him that, then that's it. He wasn't for me. If he stays like he did, <laughs> you know, yeah. we're good to go. So we ended up going out of town, yeah. separate hotel rooms. I'm moving luggage. Well, I'm, you know, getting the luggage out the vehicle, taking them up to the rooms. And at that, while I was doing all that, Kim and my mom were meeting. Yes, I was meeting his mom. She was, she was what they say grilling. She wasn't really grilling. She wasn't mean or anything. She was just, you know, want to know who her son talking to, which I understand. Like, and I just was honest with her. I told her, you know, my story and a little bit of my background. And she was like, okay. She was like, how long y'all been dating? I was like, well, at this point, two weeks. <laughs> um, she was like, oh, okay, that's enough time. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> okay. She was like, okay, that's so nice to meet you. And that was it. I ended up going to my room because at that time, well, we had drove all night. I was exhausted. He ended up going to his mom's room and she says. Yeah, well, I'm taking, walking my mom back to her room. She's like, yeah, Kim's a keeper. I was like, what y'all talking about? I was like, already, mama? Like, it ain't barely been 10 minutes. Like, what, what's happening? Yeah. What, like, what, what, what information did you gather right. in that short time frame? What's right. going on? So, we, I think we could go on with stories for days, but yeah. how God wrote our love story, it was, it was in a lot of those small moments. Um, just because I'm really big on family, and I'm always like, Man, like that would suck if my family just hated the person that I was with. Like I just, I would hate that. But God worked it out to where everybody loved everybody. You know, like, like, like my uncle one time just like was like, hey, you know, here go my number, nephew. Like calling him nephew, and I'm like, like at this point, I'm still trying to figure out. Like, yeah, we were dating, but you know, dating is the time for you to decide. Like, hey, is this somebody we want to marry? Or is this, you know, what we doing? Like, I'm still trying to figure it out. I'm still in prayer. I'm like, yeah, I know all y'all love him, but baby, I'm the one who gonna have to be with him. Like, I need to know if I, you know. And so, um, when you let God lead your relationships and your life, like He shows up in ways that just blow your mind. Like, 
our marriage, our relationship, our story, it's a constant reminder to me that God answers prayers because I'm living in an answered prayer. And I'm just so thankful that I said yes to God, number one, and that my stubbornness didn't win. Because if my stubbornness won, I wouldn't be sitting here with the, the greatest love story of my life. Like, I know people have love stories, but this one, this one is my favorite. And I'm so glad that I get to do life with him every day. We have, we have fun all the time and- Pretty soon. Yes, and now you guys have been able to meet him. Are there any encouraging words that you'd like to give any single men out there or any, just in case they're watching or? Um, I would just say, um, you know, be encouraged and know that like, even if thing, it seems like things are taking a detour or they don't always go according to, you know, the plans that maybe you had already set out, like don't let that, you know, don't take that as always, don't always take that as a sign of like, oh man, maybe this ain't it. Cause I mean, I feel like our marriage and like even our leading up to marriage, there were just a lot of things that didn't pan out the way we expected, you know? Cause it's like the day I proposed to Kim, like it was supposed to be outside, but like the weather like changed on the dime and it was raining that day. So we ended up having to, you know, flip up, you know, switch up and then go into an indoor location and then like Kim was taking some pictures that day. And so, you know, the expectation was like, oh, okay, she was going to stay dressed in what she was taking pictures in. But you know, she was tired of getting ready to go home. And so like now, <laughs> like you got engagement, you got engagement pictures and what she wasn't expecting, you know. And I might insert a picture of the engagement picture. I don't know. I don't know. My face was done though. <laughs> My face was kind of cute. I mean, I had tears, but my face was mm -hmm. cute, but the outfit was nice. But yeah, and just, um, you know, I think just believing that, like, even when things, you know, even when there are detours, they're like, God's still at work. Yeah. And, um, I mean, yeah, just trust the Lord through the process, you know, even if she don't want to kiss until wedding day. Trust. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Don't forget that God is God and we are not. So we trust him. And we let him do his thing. See y'all next time. Bye. Bye.